Hey everyone, so recently I was lucky enough to have someone bring me back a ton of stuff from a trip to Japan. I was totally not expecting it, it was really awesome. And a lot of them were toys and games and really cute little small things that really made me smile. Um, a lot of them were adorable and ridiculous, especially this Gudetama slime, which totally got me. I have never laughed so hard in my life when opening a present. It was just the total best, it was awesome. Um, and all these things were super great and I would have been totally pleased just getting them But I was also lucky enough to get some stationery like these amazing stickers I will be using them in my bullet journal this month, especially these French Bulldogs and bear stickers They are wonderful for planners and on top of that I got a handful of art supplies They are supplies I've never tried before some of them I've never even seen before so I'm sure you could buy them online or maybe in specialty import stores But I've never seen them in any of the stationery stores around here so I I just wanted to do a quick demo and review of them so you can see um, what my first impressions were and how I intend to use them. I tested all of these in my sketchbook and I started with the Pilot Juice Paints which are a set of paint markers. I've never used these before but first impressions I really love that they're small and compact. These are super easy to throw in my bag and carry around with me. And I also really liked the color palette. I use pastels a lot in my drawings and in my work in general, so I thought I'd get a lot of use out of these. These are really similar to a lot of paint markers in that you have to shake them a whole bunch and then press the tip a lot to get the ink flowing. And that took a little time, so I cut that out for the most part. But once I did get the ink flowing, I really, really enjoyed how these pens wrote. They have a really fine tip, they're 0.7 millimeter, so you can get a lot of small detail and definition. And I love that they actually wrote true pastel colors. A lot of times something looks pastel in the packaging and writes a lot darker, so I love that these actually showed up the same color as the pen cap. Unfortunately, the lighter colors like yellow and pink obviously didn't show up super well, and I didn't even bother testing the white on white paper because I knew it wouldn't show up, but given how smooth and opaque these colors are, they really are like paint. I do think they would show up nicely on colored or dark paper, and I actually did end up using the white on black paper later on, and it worked really, really well. I'm not totally sure how I'm going to use these in my artwork yet, but since I have been trying to practice handwriting and hand lettering more recently, I think I'm really going to enjoy using these for that purpose. Next up we have the Zig Clean Color Brush Pens, and this is a four pack of brush pens in blue, pink, green, and yellow. And these are a really traditional brush pen, they have a nice flexible tip, and I do think these would work really well for things like hand lettering. Um, fortunately I am just learning how to get into hand lettering, so I think these are going to work really well for practicing. They're really easy to use and the colors are really vibrant and they don't tend to drag or have any dryness to them. So I'm just going to do a really quick demo showing you all the different line variation you can get. And like with most brush pens, depending on how you hold it and how hard you press, you can really get a nice range of lines, so I really like that about them. This is the Zig Brush Pen number 22, and I actually have a similar pen in a different size. And these are the types of pens that have an inkwell at the bottom and a brush tip at the top. And what you do is you remove this little piece of plastic that prevents the ink from spilling out into the brush before you start using it. And then after you put it back together, you can kind of shake it and squeeze it, similar to the paint pens at the beginning, and the ink will start to flow into the brush head. And this allows you to control how much or how little ink comes out. And it does take a little bit of shaking and a little bit of um, pressure to get the ink to start to flow. But once it does, you can um, control the ink flow, which is really cool. And so you can test it and be just like me and accidentally get ink everywhere. But once that's under control, you can see how you can get either a solid black, really saturated ink look or you can let it dry out and get a nice dry brush look so it kind of works for a lot of different applications and there's a lot of flexibility with it. 
I love the line variation you can get with brush pens like this because you get all this visual interest in your drawings without having to jump between different sizes of pens. But if you've never worked with a pen like this, if you're used to microns or technical pens, there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve because it just feels very different. You have a much bigger tip with a lot more flexibility and that can be a little bit harder to control. But once you get used to that, you have this really awesome tool that's much more convenient than carrying around a paintbrush or a dip pen dipped into an inkwell. So it makes it really convenient for travel and you can still get all of the great effects like the dry brush look and thick and thin lines, which you can't really get with technical pens. I did feel like it was a little bit difficult to keep the brush tip uh, saturated when I was first using this. It did feel like it was running a little bit dry, but once I played with it for a little bit, that went away. So I do feel like this is a really solid pen to use if you can find something similar or if you can even find this exact pen. This last one is the Zig White Ink Brush Pen, and I think I was the most excited about this one because I've used white ink pens before, but I've never used them in a brush tip format. And it's really similar to the last pen where you pop off this piece of plastic, and then you kind of shake it and squeeze it to get the ink flowing. And I will admit, like this one took a lot more effort to get the ink flowing nicely, and I don't know if it was my particular pen or if it was the ink, but it was a little bit of a headache at first. But once I got it going and I was able to test it, I have to say I really like this. In the past, for my traditional drawings, I've added highlights with things like white jelly rolls, which do not have very good line variation, or I've had the inconvenience of carrying around a paintbrush with a bottle of acrylic paint, which works well, but is a huge inconvenience sometimes. So knowing I could get that same line variation with a single pen was really appealing to me. Now, here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the Zig brush pen with the Pilot Juice Paint. You're obviously going to get more line variation with the brush pen versus the Pilot pen, which is going to have a much thinner, much more static line. But I was really surprised that both of these are really comparable in terms of their saturation. Sometimes with white ink pens, the colors can kind of sink into the dark background and they don't show up super vibrantly. But I did find that both of these showed up really, really well. So if you're looking for a highlight pen, either of these would be a really good option just depending on the look that you're going for. All right, and that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions about any of these tools, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. Give this video a like if you liked it, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.